On graphic, not much to separate Mikey Garcia from Matt Remillard. Unbeaten against unbeaten. You look at the height, the weight, the reach, the arm length. It's virtually identical. Total rounds as well. Couple of differences though. Amateur experience. Ramillard had a better amateur uh, resume, and, but he has a new trainer he's only worked with for less than a month. So that may play in as we look at the uh, tail of the tape here for this 12 rounder to play out. And as we get started, and looking at uh, Matt Ramillard, Max, let's start with him. Top five in three alphabets, guy with a dream, in by far his most dangerous fight, but what's his reality? His reality is that he's a good local Northeast fighter who wants to be the fighter, as in Mickey Ward, the fighter. Played by Mark Wahlberg, for those who don't know Mickey Ward, the fighter. He wants to be the local kid that made good, that, that went farther than people may have anticipated and did it on his desire and his heart and his fortitude. And he'll need those things tonight against the favored Mikey Garcia. And Roy, Mikey Garcia is prohibited favorite in this. Let me ask you, who is he? Is he the guy we all strongly suspect he is? Destined for stardom in a power pack by the way division. Uh, Mikey Garcia to me is a guy who's an opportunist. He's a guy who had the opportunity to grow up around the sport, never really as, uh, perspired, aspired to do it, but he grew up around it, so he became lucky enough to get opportunities. Because of the opportunities, now he's taken the sport much more serious, and now he's become a big name in a big sport. So, ready for our first featherweight bout of the night. Again, unbeaten against unbeaten, and for the official introductions, as we see the flags waving and things getting ready to get started. Matt Remillard in the ring. And here comes Mikey Garcia from that boxing rich background, trained by his brother, former champion. So he's got the pedigree as we now go up for the official introductions from ring announcer Michael Buffer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Boardwalk Hall, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, where tonight, Top Rank Boxing is proud to present HBO Boxing After Dark, an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. Sponsored by Tecate Cerveza con Carácter, all bouts sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, at ringside, the three judges scoring this contest will be George Hill, Lawrence Layton, and Julie Letterman. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, Ricardo Vera. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on the line, the NABF, NABO featherweight title, 12 rounds of boxing, Two undefeated young fighters. Somebody's O has got to go. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gray with red, official weight 125 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 24 fights, 24 victories, including 20 knockouts from Moreno Valley, California, the undefeated. Miguel Angel, Mikey Garcia. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold with white, officially weighing in at 125 pounds. Also, a perfect professional record, 23 fights, 23 victories, including 13 knockouts from Manchester, Connecticut. The undefeated, defending NABF, NABO, featherweight champion, Matt Sharpshooter Rimmelard. Let's go, champ. 
Miguel. Gentlemen, 12 championship rounds. The NABF and NAB NABO titles. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourself and obey my commands at all times. This is good. This is good. Touch them up at the sound of the bell. Let's get to work. It's an old expression. You don't choose your profession. Your profession chooses you. Boxing chose Mikey Garcia. Too much talent not to fight. Matt Remillard chose boxing. He's passionate about it. And he's going to need that passion tonight to overcome the more talented Garcia. A decided underdog in the gold and white is Matt Remillard as we get started. Mikey Garcia in the gray and red. Garcia very patient. He's a guy who still considers himself a counterpuncher. His technique, he's poised, but he could be aggressive. And Robert Garcia, his trainer, says he strikes at the right time. And man, does he drive his punches, Max. Yeah, Gar Garcia is a uh, power puncher, even though he has a clinical style, and sometimes can walk guys into big shots as they get over anxious. Roy, uh, tempo texture. What do you expect? How's this fight going to play out? Well, I expect uh, Garcia to use his jab early uh, to start a little quicker than he has in the previous fights we've seen him and allow his punching power to overwhelm uh, Matt if he can. For Matt, I expect him to pressure the fight, stay close to Garcia, and keep Garcia out of that comfort zone. Don't let him relax and pick his shots. Force him to take shots that he doesn't set up. Ramillard in the goal likes to be close at times, but he likes to use uh, his length. But they look pretty even here. Certainly on paper it played out that way. Yeah, but Remillard is a better puncher on the inside, and Garcia seems to be a better puncher on the outside, yeah, which is why I say Remillard should get closer. And uh, we'll see if Remillard could shorten up inside. He's really got to get rough, and I think win some, put some rounds in the bank as an underdog, be more aggressive, and it looks like he's doing it. He had the... Uh, then you see Garcia answer back. Yes, and as they, soon as Remillard has a little success. And it looks like Garcia now is driving Remillard to the ropes, and Remillard taking a lot of shots, electing not to hold on. And Remillard told us yesterday at the meetings, you know, he's got to get Garcia out of the comfy zone. He's got to drive him back, and it's not happening so far. Remillard had what sounded to me, Roy, like the perfect game plan in the fighter meetings as he was describing it yesterday. <laughs> He did, but the problem is, it's just like I just I said earlier, uh, Garcia is starting quicker than we usually see him start. Yeah, it's throwing Remel Remillard's plan is not only to pressure him, but to step around opposite the way a right-handed fighter normally steps, meaning counterclockwise to take away Garcia's right hand. Exactly. What do you think of uh, one month training, new trainer? I mean, how much can you pick up, Roy? Well, you can pick up a little bit, but it's not going to be something that's substantial because when he gets into a tough situation, he's going to go back to the things that he's been doing over the years, not over the last month. Ramalar tried to land that right hand. Garcia right in front of him. There's a nice right hand. He'll try to line him up with that long left, and that's what Ramalar is going to try to take away. He doesn't want Mike, Mikey Garcia to get to fight long. Are you feeling Mira, good round? Very good. Look, in that first round, where you had him there against the ropes, where you were throwing the punches, his body was open because his hands were really high. Now pay attention on that factor. But because he did very well, but he put his hands up and he protected himself up high, but below he was open. So, attack at the body. And he's blocking the jab. He's blocking the jab. You're doing good. You have to be careful. You just have to be careful. Jab with him. All right. Paul, go ahead. Talk it's to him. Fake, buddy, okay? when, you, when you turn, you punch. Punch off your turns. He's turning to find you. When you don't need that ice pack yet. Run into the right hand. Left hook. You understand? All right, baby. Come on. This is hey, yours. Stay down. Nice right hand. Okay? Matt Rebelard's never been down as a pro. It happened once in the amateurs. Punch stats in round one. Garcia, 81 shots thrown, and Remillard just 38. But Remillard had a better connect rate as we look at CompuBox stats. And here we see Garcia coming out. He's on the right. 
He's pumping the jab very effectively here, but Robert Garcia says the body's open at times. That Remillard's hands are a little high. It's, it, Remillard can't win this fight if Garcia's outworking him. At the very least, he's going to have to outwork Garcia. Absolutely, out hustle him. He's got to get rounds in the bank again, Max. I agree with you. At, which is difficult to do because you're, he'd be walking in on a big puncher. Nice body shot, and that is Remillard's best punch. They really worked on that left hook to the body. Roy, your opinion of Remillard's jab? Well, he has a good jab, but my problem with Remillard right now is that Mikey Garcia is a heavy-handed puncher. He's a heavy-handed featherweight. Having your hands so close to your head, even when you block the shots, you still feel the impact because of his heavy hands. I don't like that Mikey has his hand, I mean, not Mikey, that Matt has his hands so close to his head with a hard puncher like Mikey. And Garcia does have a good body shot. He has that cleanup hook at times, but it's that jab that sets up that long right hand for him. And he really just, as you said, drives right through you, as we saw in the Oliver Lanchi fight. And he had a tremendous performance against Cornelius Locke, who was on a roll. Right, that's the difference as punchers. You hit, you hit the nail on the head, Nick. Whereas Remillard who connects, Garcia punches through the target. Remillard overhand right, now that left hook to the body. And here we see a left-right good combination from Garcia on the left. But look at how patient Garcia, he'll back off and try to line his guy up. Well, you gotta give Remillard credit for trying to take him out of that comfort zone because he's pushing the issue much more now and forcing Garcia to fight, and which Garcia usually doesn't throw this many punches this early in a fight. Yeah, now he backed him up. Which may not be good news for Remillard. <laughs> <laughs> Should Remillard be turning Garcia a little bit more? Is he capable of it? What's his footwork like? Well, he's capable of it, but for him, he wants to just outwork Remillard. I mean, outwork Garcia. I don't know if that's a great plan or not, because we know that Garcia can last that long, but we're not sure about Remillard. But he did say he wanted to get Garcia out of his game plan early, not let him be comfortable, and push the issue. So we're going to see if he's in conditioned enough to be able to sustain this. And moving ahead, you know, Remillard has been 10 rounds three times. But again, not against the quality of opposition that Mikey Garcia in gray has faced. Nice oh, overhand right. right. Hand. And now, Garcia took it well as we end round two. On Wednesday, March 30th, in a special edition hey. just three days prior to the Final Four, What's up? Hey. Real Sports will take stock of the NCAA, asking whether the system is working or whether it needs fixing. World Championship Boxing returns April 16th on HBO. First up, Amir Khan defends his 140-pound title against Paul McCloskey, and then Andre Berto puts his share of the welterweight title on the line against Victor Ortiz, so a live Red Hot doubleheader on HBO as we listen in. Lively, lively, you've got it. You gotta be meaner. You've gotta be meaner. This round was too easy, too easy for him. Come on, build it. Don't let him build. Let's go, don't give the rounds away. Hold. Round three, and Robert Garcia hard on his brother. We saw Remillard land a higher percentage, 19 of 63, 30% of his shots. Garcia threw 96 shots, only landed at 18%, but because he threw so many, he landed 17. Garcia, so, he's fun to watch, you know, but Robert always says, I want him to fight with more fire, but it's not his tendency to plunge right in, so why change something that's worked pretty well? Right, and you'd rather land 19 Garcia shots or 17 <laughs> Garcia shots and 19 Remillard shots. Good point. Bottom line is what you're landing. And there we see that left hand and then an overhand right from Garcia. So Garcia trying to pump up the volume a little bit more, but Remillard still pressing forward, trying to find fresh angles. You know what I like about Remillard so far, guys, is what we saw from Matthew Hatton against Canelo Alvarez. You know, a, more, a, a smaller, less talented guy. He's not really smaller in this case, but a less talented guy, an underdog, who's not showing up to lose. He's not showing up to show you that he's game, but he's going to lose. He believes he can win, and he's trying his best to do it. That he is doing. Exactly. And, you know, he, he said this is life-changing, an opportunity for him that he can't afford to blow. 
And who knows how a guy's going to react. But so far, he looks pretty composed in by far the biggest fight of his life. It, it sounds funny to say, well, of course, he's not showing up Ooh. to lose. But see, uh, after a big right hand like that, a guy can easily get discouraged and think, well, maybe I'm an underdog for a reason. He doesn't yeah. seem to be getting discouraged. Yeah, double rights now. So that right from uh, Garcia, he's really unclocking it. Not so much behind the jab now, but now he's in tight, and that's Remillard's sweet spot. If he shortens up, and he's doing it nicely so far, Roy. Yeah, if you get to give him a little credit, Watch ahead, he doesn't guys. have Watch a lot of ahead. professional experience as far as great fighters, but he won the nationals and the amateurs twice, and that says a lot about a guy. So right. he has seen just about everything. Those hooks are sinking in from Garcia. Now good extension on that right hand, but it missed, uh, just grazing Garcia. Remillard trying to unload the right, and now he's got, he's driving uh, Garcia to the corner, or at least against the ropes. Garcia, double right hand, smacks and whipsaws that left. Rápido, rápido. Vamos. Time back in. Let's go, fellas. You know, an interesting stat here, as you look at CompuBox, only three Garcia punches to the body of Remillard. And Robert Garcia, his trainer, asked him to go to the body after the first round. Is it open? It's open, and the reason he wants him to go to the body is to try to wear Matt down a little bit because they see that Matt is going to be a little busy bug tonight. He's going to stay on top of him a lot. I mean, to, on top of Garcia to try to wear him down. So if he invests some body shots now, maybe he can wear Rimmelor down at the same time. A good clip as we close out round three. I'm gonna take it. How are you? How's his power? He has no power. He doesn't okay. look strong. Okay, and the body a bit bit sore, yes. But all right, be careful with those body shots. The response. Well, you could dominate. That's not our game plan. I know you want to get some shots off, but you do it off combinations and movement, right? It's all going into the fourth round. You're not even warmed up yet. All right? Hey, head movement, beautiful jab, turn them, combinations, left hook to the body, bring it back to the head, and step around him. He needs to be set to punch, right? Don't let him get set. He you see Matt laying the left uppercut, straight right hand down the middle, come back with a one-two, which is a great follow-up combination from Garcia. He needs to do more of that, though. Yeah. Drive that up, corner man. Let's go. Max, how is uh, Ramillard at all creating any problems from, from Garcia as you see it through three? Well, he is standing in the pocket and boxing pretty well. Um, the difference here is that when Remillard lands his shots, you don't get the sense that they're really bothering Garcia. When Garcia lands his shots, you get the sense that he can stop Remillard later in the fight with those same kind of punches. And when you wonder why Top Rank, who has high hopes for Mikey Garcia, puts him in a fight like this, it seems that that's the reason, that Remillard is not considered a knockout threat. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three, buddy? Okay, Nick. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Mikey Garcia. You know, before we start, did anybody say anything about them trunks that Matt Rebellot is wearing? I mean, I haven't seen trunks like that since Hector Camacho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's incredible. Anyway, be as it may, uh, Mikey Garcia, the quicker guy, I think he's got more snap through shots. It's amazing that he gets that jab in, you know, because Rebellot's got his hands so high and so, you know, so close. He's got his elbows in tight, and Garcia still gets through with that jab, but he doubles it also. Three to nothing. Nothing, Mikey Garcia. And not the good Camacho either, the older Camacho <laughs> with those shorts. Garcia trying to come forward here. Little baby hook makes uh, Remillard think twice, makes him restart. But Remillard sort of coming straight in now, and he's not listening to. Uh, his trainer in terms of trying to turn him maybe the footwork just isn't there well he's not following his own plan his own plan was to circle to the right and jab but like i said with a month's training with a new trainer it's harder to stick to that plan when you got a 16 or 17 year plan that you've been imposing since you started boxing yes and as you guys reiterated step to the right away from that big right hand of garcia which is an unnatural way for a right hander to move usually and roy i think part of the problem 
may be that Garcia seems to have a reach advantage. Whatever it is on paper, he seems like the longer fighter. And in stepping around on his back foot, he still seems, Remillard still seems in range for Garcia. Like he's not out of the danger zone even when he does it. Yeah, he's not out of the danger zone. And the other problem he has is stepping to his right, taking away his left hook. He wants to throw that left hook like right there to the body. And he has to go to the left to do that. So he doesn't like stepping around to the right because he feels like one of his best punches is his left hook to the body. I'm just not impressed with Remillard's inside work. It seems like he stopped shortening up punches. There he tries the hook again. But he's just a little short with those shots. He's got to get rougher inside, in my opinion. Yeah, I mentioned that he didn't show up as a game loser. There's a difference between giving a game effort and really trying to win. If it's not going your way, coming up with something different. What a night for featherweights on Boxing After Dark on HBO from Atlantic City. A chilly night, as Bob Papa said at the beginning, but it's heating up in here quickly as we look at world champion unbeaten Yuri Orcus Gamboa getting ready for his main event fight against Jorge Solis. Gamboa, the Cuban champion at 112 pounds, now fights comfortably at 126. We'll see him a little later in the big one. You can't be giving those rounds away. Come on, look alive and bring him up with the left hand. Lively, lively, and be more active. Box, baby. Keep him turning, all right? Let's go. Matt, let's go. Right up. That is the key. Mikey Red Skodronsky, uh, the new trainer of uh, Remillard, continues to urge his guy, keep Garcia turning, and it's not happening. Garcia threw more punches, landed more punches, and landed at a higher percentage in the last round. This is a guy who stays on message, Garcia. He just doesn't get ahead of himself. There's that hook to the body. From Remillard. Overhand right misses from Garcia. Now they punch together. Roy, is the difference in hand speed? I mean, at least if Remillard can't be first, he should be last. Or it's not really a difference in hand speed. What the problem is here is that Garcia, Mikey Garcia, has heavy hands for a featherweight, and people don't realize that. But he's a true, he's truly a strong, powerful puncher for a featherweight. So when a guy doesn't have true power like that, it's hard to exchange with him. And for Matt to get inside, he has to basically exchange, and he doesn't want to do that because he's not going to win those exchanges. Max, this is 12 rounds. We're only in the fifth, but do you see any signs of apprehension or slight discouragement from Ramallah? I, I do. I do in the last couple rounds, and you've alluded to it, and the, the term game loser, I'm used to hearing from my friend Teddy Atlas, the ESPN broadcaster. <laughs> But, and, and it's a little too harsh to apply that to Remillard here. But there is just that, not resignation, he's still trying hard. I don't know if he's trying with quite the same spirit he had in the first couple rounds. And it, it's, it, sometimes it's hard to tell with a guy like this because he's not a big puncher. It's not as though we're expecting one punch to change the fight for him. Yes. And right. so if his game plan's not working, what does he do? Garcia right down the middle, lines him up for that right hand that misses. He tries the jab to set up the right hand again. So that's Garcia's combination firepower. And he will grab the moment if it's there. Remillard now trying to turn Garcia, but Garcia moving right with him. And out of the danger zone, so he's in a very, very comfortable zone, Garcia. Nice little short hook. Well, the thing that has happened here is that Remillard is allowing Garcia to punch first now. When Garcia punches first, he lands the punches the most because Remillard's hands are already at home on his face. He's scared to stick them out because he's getting hit even with them on his face. So because he has them so close to his head, it's hard for him to defend himself without moving his hands. So he can't punch because he's defending himself with them. There's that baby jab from Remillard. He's just not driving through with it. Boy, well, do you think in the corner it's getting to the point in the fight where they say to Remillard, hey, you got to try something different? Or is it, hey, you're not doing what we discussed? Got to try something different. 
Garcia liked that round as he Let's goes go. back hey. to the corner. First every time, Matt, all right? Give me and a when, he, when you look at the replay here, headshots galore, one after another from Mikey Garcia, almost exclusively. And look at the discouragement on Ramillard's face. That hook hurt and made him think twice and completely restart. And here it is verified in the punch zone. Look at those shots to the head. Only seven body shots landed on Ramillard. Yeah. But that's a very, very low number. And Garcia is such a precision puncher, he'd be wise to maybe step it up down there. We go to the sixth. Two unbeaten featherweights, Mikey Garcia in the gray and in the gold and white. Matt Ramillard in the most dangerous fight of his life. You know, it's one of the quirks of professional boxing scoring. It's not that Ramillard's not in the fight. He's competitive in each round, but he's not winning them. And so you get no points for being competitive in each round. Great point, Max. You could go 10-9 all night and stay in the same rhythm and still be competitive, but yeah, you could lose by... Yeah. Wide margin. You get shut out. That's it. Ramlar tries a sneaky little lead right hand. We haven't seen that from him. There's the jab. He's trying to go up the middle, but Garcia reading and reacting very nice. He's taking those shots on the gloves. Good head movement, it looks like. Pretty Remo, solid Remo. defense. Other problem with a fighter like uh, Matt Ramlar is he uses his hands solely for defense. He doesn't move his head out of, out of the way of punches. He doesn't really duck many punches like that. He did a jab, but he usually uses his hands as his main line of defense. And that's hard to do that and offend at the same time. In other words, you can't block a punch and throw a punch at the same time. Yeah, we're in the sixth, and Ramillard, we should note, all 13 of his KOs in his 23 fights came within four rounds. So no stoppages past the fourth. Could be significant. Mikey Garcia is a guy who is patient, but can be very aggressive and step it up big time. Well, Roy, you mentioned opportunism uh, earlier in the broadcast, and that's Garcia. It's the way he fights. He's exactly. an opportunist in the ring. When he sees openings, he takes advantage, and he does not expose himself to unnecessary risk. Yeah, and Remillard has not been inside. His work has just really suffered there. I thought it'd be a lot rougher again to reiterate, and it was Mikey Garcia burying a hook to the ribs of Remillard there seconds ago. So if, if Remillard, Roy, if his game plan, whether or not he executes it, is not right now, maybe because he can't execute it, what should he do? Well, I don't understand what he's doing right now, but he has to definitely be first, and well, his biggest thing is that he can't afford to exchange punches with Garcia. So it's hard for him to do anything because he's not a mover. He's not a circle around the ring type boxer. He's a straightforward guy. And with being a straightforward guy, his options are very limited because he just comes straight forward all the time. So it's not a lot of things he can do at this point because the way that he fights is so limited. And, and he's not a puncher. Exactly. So he don't know how to get on his toes and move around to truly turn the guy like we want him to turn it, or like he said he was going to turn him. Nick, did you did you hear Roy's hesitation? That means there's really not much he can do because Roy <laughs> has an answer for everything. He'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> and you know, there's a saying in boxing. I believe you never stop trying, but sometimes you stop believing. And this is the 15th anniversary of boxing after dark, and here's a classic: Arturo Gatti against Wilson Rodriguez. 1996 Gaddy's first defense of his IBF 130 pound title. Listen in and watch. Gaddy goes down on a short left hook inside. And he didn't see it coming. Cover your left eye. All right. Cover your left eye or it's over. How many fake? Guy said cover. How many fingers? Now. Oh. oh, that hurt very bad. Glad he's hurt. Got it seriously hurt. Yep. He's wobbling now. Yes, he says Rodriguez is about to put him out of there with accumulated punishment. Hey. Down goes Rodriguez. What a left hook. He won't make it up from that. No way. Arturo Gatti with How about that comeback win. 
colossal turnaround. I know Harold Letterman remembers it well. How do you have it, Harold, halfway through? <laughs> okay, Nick. I got it 60 to 54, six rounds to nothing, Mikey Garcia. By the way, that doctor that said cover your eye <laughs> is Stephen Gelfman, who still works for the New York State Athletic Commission. Terrific job in that fight. Anyway, you know, this, this fight's killing me. Mikey Garcia winning the fight easily, you know, doing all the damage. For God's sake, step in, try and get the guy out. Look around, guys. Nobody's cheering, nobody's standing, nobody's clapping because Mikey Garcia is happy to go tap, 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 tap and win every round. I mean, it's a damn shame that he doesn't go in and try and finish the guy. Put up an exciting fight. Give the fans what they pay to see. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, the fight's over. Anyway, six to nothing, Mikey Garcia. Well, has Remillard been uh, lulled to sleep? I'm not sure. And oh. can he get it back? You know, there's a big difference between what Remillard wants to do and what he needs to do and what he's capable of doing. And, and what that's what it's coming down to. Harold, was with, a, with one of his usual excellent observations, uh -huh. is making the point that he's lulling the crowd to sleep and he needs to put Remillard to sleep to wake this crowd back up. And we know that's not who Mikey Garcia truly is. Right, it's just not his temperament. <laughs> no way, he's an opportunist. He got the opportunity to come here to take these fights. So if he gets the opportunity to win them by boxing, that's what he's going to do. He's not here to be no superstar. He's here just taking full advantage of a beautiful opportunity right. that he, God blessed him with. Yeah, he, he b began boxing just because he was so good at it. It was impossible to ignore, and he really never loved it. He just liked it fine. Uh, eventually, uh, I'll have some amateur fights. He's successful there. Okay, let's try some pro fights. And eventually, it's like, look, you're considered one of the best prospects in boxing. There's a future in this for you. His profession chose him. But is he is he stepping it up at all here? It's Ramillard boxing on the back foot, as they say. So he's gone into a little retreat. No success on the inside. And it's just a matter of class now telling, uh, as Har Harold clearly explained. Yeah, and, and like I said earlier, the problem is is that Remillard is very limited at what he can do. That's why it was hard for me to figure out what he could do to actually change this fight around. It's not really much he can do because he's not a mover. If he was a mover, he could get on his toes and possibly go left and right a little more to force Garcia to turn around or try to change his pivots. But he's not that type of a guy. So there's not many things that he can do to change the course of this fight. Mikey Garcia, I... I just love the focus for a 22-year-old kid. He graduated from Oxnard Community College, Ventura County Police Reserve Academy graduate. You know, he's not getting far ahead of himself uh, to say boxing's not going to be my life forever. But the focus he shows in everything he does and the excellence is just, it's just something to really, to, to really admire. Belly is uh, bothering me. <laughs> breathe, breathe. <laughs> but the rounds are coming. The rounds are coming. He's half fight. You got to do more, Mike. Mike. Combinations go. All right? Matt, you believe in yourself, Matt? Go out and do it, okay? Be first and be last. All right? Hey, the jab is beautiful, all right? Look for the uppercuts and hooks when he leans forward inside, all right? Yep. Find the left hook to the body. Create that opening, all right? Matt. Faster. Let's go. You have better, faster fight. Get a more experience. Hey, you know, that's a big thing that, uh, that uh, Mike Red Skarnowski told uh, uh, Ramalar, big difference between finding opportunities and creating them, right? Yes, it is. And uh, Ramalar doesn't seem to be there to create them. It's hard for him to create them because he doesn't have enough punching power to force Mikey to respect anything that he does. Well, he's fighting a responsible kind of fight, Ramalar, and what he needs to do is decrease the chances that he's going to win any given exchange in order to give himself any chance at all to win the fight. He's Seriously. going to have to not be not be technically what he's used to being. So he's going to have to gamble more offensively? Yes. Absolutely. But that's all he knows how to be. <laughs> so it's basically impossible for him to gamble. He doesn't have punching power to gamble with. So what's he going to gamble with? If he wants to, you know, 
be the fighter, if you want to be Mickey Ward, <laughs> if you want to go farther than you have the right to go, you have to be willing to kind of go outside your comfort zone. That's very true. And you know, we talk about the meteoric rise and the can't miss possibilities of Mikey Garcia. But I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with Harold that you, you want to hear more buzz here about this guy. You know, he should really be creating a lot of heat, Mikey Garcia. Uh, Arturo Gaddy, we showed the clip before, did as much as anyone, maybe more, any fighter to build this boxing after dark <laughs> franchise, right? <laughs> and he did it on 100% passion. That is not Mikey Garcia. Garcia waiting to punch. He's in the gray. Now he's inside and doing a better job as they tie up. Round eight of a scheduled 12 rounder. You know what? One, one other thing about Mikey Garcia is the gym that he's in. You, you have to bring it up, Roy. That's right. You got to be able to do everything in that gym because there's such talented fighters there that in order to survive, you got to know how to do it all. But isn't it interesting that in that gym and Robert Garcia candidate for trainer of the year has is like the Rex Ryan of boxing right he's the players coach he's the guy everyone wants to fight for because <laughs> it's a kind of n unpolitically correct uh, one for all and all for one fighters gym <laughs> but everyone in that gym with the exception of Garcia seems to be a guy who fights with a lot of passion yeah, they are, but he didn't come oh. in the sport with a lot of passion. Brandon, so Brandon Rios, Rios, Antonio and Margarito, Nonito Donaire, 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 Donaire even, who's a <laughs> clinical fighter, but a, but a but a an exciting clinical fighter. A beast. Yeah. But these guys came in boxing wanting to be boxers. He didn't come, boxing called for him. Like you said, they said, we need a guy to fight this guy in the exhibition. Do you want to do it? He said, why not? <laughs> and that's how he started. So box, boxing, didn't, he didn't call for boxing like they did. Boxing called for him. We're in Atlantic City on a Saturday night on the boardwalk. Boxing after dark, a featherweight doubleheader as we're about to head to round nine. And look at the other main event fighter, Jorge Solis. His last three fights has, have been a junior lightweight. So he's dropping down tonight to what was much more of a natural weight for him much of his career at 126 pounds to take on Yuri Orcas Gamboa. He says he can match speed with him. We'll see soon. Oh, if you got a push, you got two more. Hey, hard work. Okay. No? Doing it, okay? Man, let's go. Man. Keep them turning. Combinations. Keep them rolling, okay? Let's go. You can do this, Matt. Let's go get it. Garcia outpunched uh, Ramillard 2-1 to one in that eighth round. Connect rate was pretty even. About one out of three. Now Ramillard picking it up off the jab. He has got to get more aggressive and take chances. Ramillard in the gold. Trying to work off that jab a little bit. But he's not getting any momentum forward as Garcia is starting to walk him down. Garcia whips the, the hook that's short. What's funny is in the fight of me, uh, Remillard said he never seen nobody back Garcia up. But in this fight, however, uh, Garcia is backing Remillard up, and we've never seen nobody really back Remillard up either. Well, Remillard came into the fighter meeting yesterday saying it's an opportunity of a lifetime and that, uh, you know, he sees this as his coming out party. It's not that he's fighting poorly, but he's not fighting with the same kind of intensity that he said he would. Yeah, a matter of class. It really is. Uh, Mikey Garcia just better in every department. Yeah. You said, you said, right, class tells over time, especially with each increasing round. The longer these guys go, the more class tells. Garcia with that left hand working, trying to line up the right. His hands are high. He's open to the body, but Remillard not trying to exploit that now. He tries the uppercut that misses. Now Remillard's got to get rough inside. Instead, he's holding on, and he'll restart. And here comes Garcia again. Combination from Remillard. And there, some of his best infighting in a while from Remillard. Garcia with that 
hook to the ribs. Now Remillard trying to turn Garcia, but he's got to get that work rate up big time. We're in the ninth. Oh. Matt Remillard down Seven. for the first time as a pro. Eight. Not a huge shot either. But let's see what happens. Garcia go, is an excellent go, finisher. Let him go, Matt. Heavy hands. 25 seconds to go in this ninth. Can he close it out? And here he comes. And Remillard is in retreat. Referee taking a good look. Remillard, a big right and left, and he's down again. Five, six, seven. Oh, he's wobbly. That was the trunks. Nick, he, his foot wound up on his trunks. Something. Right left combination. And Matt Remillard down twice. As he tried to get up, he almost go, tripped that back down and missed the count because of the trucks. Harold, it's academic, but like a 10-7 round. Deep I mean, how do you have it now? Oh, Where's the ice pack? Give me this, man. Let's come on, give me this. Sit down. Deep breath. Deep breath. You okay? Deep breath. Know where you are? Yep. Where are you? Put down his neck. On the neck. Okay. okay, good. You want to continue? Oh, the, there you go, the left hook to the head, the first knockdown. I think it came basically from an accumulation of punches. You see him throwing the right hand, followed by that hard left hook to the head. Whoa. And the kid has heavy hands. I said that earlier in the fight, and that's where those heavy hands started to show. Harold, how do you have it? You're right, Nick. It was a 10-7 round in the night because, you know, Mikey Garcia knocked him down twice. But Mikey Garcia hurt him the first time real big at the end of the eighth round. He jumped on him there, but the bell rang. Garcia didn't have enough time to finish him. But, you know, he, Mikey Garcia really made a strong effort to finish him. I think he will get him out of here. I don't think Matt Remillard can go 12, you know, considering the beating he took in round nine. Yeah. 90 to 79, nine rounds to nothing, Mikey Garcia. Wow, he's fighting with fire, and that's what the Garcia corner wants from him. And, and to give Garcia credit, from the very first round, Remillard, when he had a little success here and there, Garcia went right at him with an extended combination and may have kind of sealed Remillard's fate early, early in the fight. Oh, he's down again, but that's a push. Rule the push. It was... Go, gentlemen. A left hand. Remillard tries to come back with a right. He's inside, but he's out of answers. Garcia lining up that jab to draw that big right hand. He's inside. Another booming left hook. So that hook has been a vicious added punch for Mikey Garcia late in this fight. And if you still notice, uh, Matt is still using just his hands for defense, his hands solely. If you watch Garcia on the inside, his hands really not up to his head like now. He's not worried about he move. He moves his head for defense. He doesn't have his hands up to his head, and that's hurting Matt right now. Here's a big solid look from the ref, and it could be over quickly unless Remillard starts punching back. He's taking serious punishment now. Here, at least, he tried something, Remillard. Oh, his game is they come now. You got to give him that. And down again. That's three times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, they're ready to throw in a towel, it looks like. But nope. The trainer sits down again. They won't have to. They won't have to. About a half minute left and raining shots on Remillard is Mikey Garcia. He wants Remillard Don't out of there no now. Him, Miguel. No push him, Miguel. And Remillard does not want to go out of there now because he's fighting like a better cat. It's all hard on him now, if not ability, right? It's true hard and grit. You can't ask for this. This is what you can't give a fighter. You got to be born with this. 
And the crowd is revved up now. Because Remillard is a, hasn't stopped trying. Look at the swelling over the right eye of Remillard. His face turning into a mask of red. Tough guy, though. Talk to me, Matt. Stop the fight. Stop the fight. Ray, 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 Ray! Good stoppage. Good idea out of the corner. What's the point? Excellent. Put your head up. Hey, it's my job. You can blame me, okay? Hey. The contest had been decided. It was no longer a competitive contest. And at that point, he's not a big puncher. This is not Arturo Gatti who can get it done with one shot. Nope. Why, why continue the beating? Smart of the corner. Very smart, very protective, and a very great coach. Ramillard down twice in the ninth, once in the tenth, and he had had enough. And that's when they stopped it. Robert Garcia on the left, and here it is, the finish. They see an overhand right by Remillard that doesn't seem to bother Garcia at all. Garcia looking for his shots, doesn't have his hands up. He used when he has to, but he don't keep them there. There's an overhand right to the ear that dropped him, and something happened to Remillard's ear because his ear is poking out a lot now. So I guess he probably caught some earlier shots that caused a swelling there. As we look at the winner, convincingly, Mikey Garcia. Let's get the official announcement from ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Palace, we have the final statistics. Referee Ricardo Vera, acting on the advice of the corner in the blue corner, calls a halt to the bout as their fighter is unable to continue. The winner, by TKO victory at the end of round 10, and now, the new NABF NBO featherweight champion, Miguel Angel, Mikey Garcia. As we look at Mikey Garcia and an outclass but very game, Matt Remillard. Total punches landed in this fight. Garcia made him count. Or less actually percentage wise, but those power punches obviously had a had a toll. They dropped Remillard twice in the ninth, once in the tenth to get that tenth round TKO. The power shots we see, the percentage. Mikey Garcia did what he had to do tonight. And you know, Bob Papa, context is nearly everything when obsessing performance. How powerful the statement do you think he made? Well, you know, I think he really stepped it up when he had to. You guys talked about it during the course of the fight that you wanted to see more. And when he sees that opportunity, he did it. And that's why he's 25 and 0 now with 21 stoppages. Yeah, what a division and what we have coming up in the main event. And again, how graciously of you to share the mic with me tonight. It's been one of the highlights of my long career in boxing and my love for the game. I just want to thank HBO once again for this wonderful opportunity to be here. Nick it's an honor to share the mic with you this evening. You inspire all of us. We admire your work. We admire your courage and we look forward to hearing from you again. Well likewise Bob thank you very much to Max Roy and everybody involved with boxing after dark buddy. Thanks. I love you. Thanks. Thank likewise. You. The great Nick Charles here with us tonight on HBO's boxing after dark. We are in Atlantic City New Jersey.